sacrificing it. This is personal. Uh, my prayer is that the reason you're here is because you want to personalize your understanding of what God would have each and every Christian to do and to be. All that we do is to know God and to make him known. And the only way that we're going to be able to do this effectively is if we know God's word and we know his intentions and his will. Beginning, let's come. build from the foundation up. When we talk about evangelism, there are some biblical images that we cannot avoid and we must understand to embrace what we're going to do moving forward. First, we see that to be a witness of Christ, Jesus said that you will be my witness. This is at the heart of evangelism. We're not going and telling people a doctrine. We're not going and trying to get people to go to a church. We're not going and trying to champion a religion. We are going to go and be the absolute witness of Jesus the Christ. He tells us that we will be fishers of men. Listen to how God himself wants you and me to understand the intentionality and the, the purpose behind this witnessing. It is to go and to rescue men unto Christ. He says that we will be ministers of reconciliation. Perhaps one of the greatest encapsulations of the gospel in all the Bible, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. You and I, Christian, we get to be these ministers of reconciliation. You get to do the ministry of reconciling a fallen sinful world, individually speaking, a fallen sinner unto a perfect God. You get to be the middle man or the middle woman in that process as an evangelist, as a missionary, as one who simply says yes, Lord, to the call on our lives. Now, in this evangelistic call, there is a sense of being. Listen again to God's word. You will be salt and light, says Matthew 5. You'll be a preservative for God. You'll be a flavor. You will impact the taste buds of this world. You'll be light in the darkness. You will be that vehicle of light that penetrates and destroys the darkness. God says, you get to be my light. You will be my light. You were with us here recently. We saw Jesus said, you will be the light of the world. I am the light of the world. You will now be the light of the world. This is at the heart of what it is to be an evangelist, to share the faith. You will be the aroma of Christ. Think of that beautiful statement in 2 Corinthians 2, 14 through 16. You and I, Christian, we get to be the aroma of Christ. We fill the nostrils of this world with the beautiful scent of the bouquet of Christ. I don't know about you, but that's not in my flesh. I don't have a naturally beautiful aroma. But you become a Christian, a true biblical Christian filled with the Holy Spirit. And you will go around and you will bring the scent of your Savior into the nostrils of a world that desperately needs to get the stink of sin out of their life. You and I will be ambassadors for Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.20. What a privilege. You get to be an ambassador of the King Christ Jesus. And just a side note, ambassadors, they don't stay at home with their people. Ambassadors are sent people. Ambassadors are those that are sent to another place to represent those from whom they are sent. You and I, Christian, we've been sent as ambassadors into the darkness. And if you think about it, you and I, Christian, if you're a biblical Christian, you've been made with the blood of Christ. The price paid was at the cross. We're ambassadors. We're meant to be sent. There's a doing involved. We're called to be fruitful. We will be the fruit of Christ. We will be the disciple makers in the doing process. We will do the interceding on behalf of others. Again, as you look through the notes, these are not my opinions. You'll see this is all from the word of God. And I'm doing this because it's incredibly important that we understand the purpose. This is not our flavor of the church. This is not our version of being a good Christian. This is Christianity. This is in the DNA of what it is to be a disciple of Christ Jesus. We will go out and we'll do the telling. Mark 1, 14 and 15, we will be the proclaimers, proclaiming the gospel. Let me just ask you, lovingly, when was the last time you proclaimed the gospel? This is at the heart of what it is to be a Christian. I just ask you, when was the last time you proclaimed the gospel? And note proclaim is, I don't whisper it in case they don't like it. When I proclaim the gospel, I stand. 
For I am not ashamed of the gospel. In the doing, in the telling, declaring his praises, 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. Teaching and preaching, Acts 5, 42. Let me just tell you up front, you don't have to be a vocational minister or missionary to be a teacher or preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. All you have to do is be a saved soul in love with Christ, we saw earlier, who knows his word, prays for his will, and then obeys and says, yes, Lord. The telling, we will exalt his name, Acts 2, 38. All the while, note this, because just at this point, it's kind of like a crescendo. You know, it's almost like somebody's ready to say, charge. All the while, depending, utterly depending upon the Father. Utterly, hopelessly depending upon the Son. Totally, completely depending upon the Spirit of God. John 6, 44, 1 Corinthians 1, 17 and 18, Acts 1, 8. Again and again and again, we see this. I just pray that you understand this is not a flavor of faith. This is what it is to be Christ Jesus Church. You'll notice as you study the scriptures and you look at this call on our lives to be Christ-like, that's exactly what being an evangelist is. Christ-like. Jesus, by his very coming to earth, initiated missions in evangelism. He's the first missionary. He left perfect heaven to come down here to the cesspool of sin to save souls, you and me. So when we talk about being Christ-like, there is perhaps no place else that we need to look to understand the call to go and reach the world for Christ. It's what he did. Number two, Jesus was flexible in his methods, but totally uncompromising in his message. So it should be for us. We should be willing to do anything shy of going against the grain of God's will and his standards so that we could reach some with the gospel in the light of Christ. We'll never know the blessing and the joy of God's richness and fullness in our life so long as we give him caveats and conditions. Jesus said, be as flexible. That means for you and me, we do whatever it takes. We go wherever, we do whatever that is in line with his word and his will that others might know what you and I claim to have. At the same time, Jesus never compromised. Look through the scriptures. You will never see him compromise with anyone. You will not see him with a user-friendly version and a mature version. It's all about truth and love. Never changes. The gospel. Third, Jesus offered forgiveness as he also demanded commitment. And there is no wiggle room, period. No bartering, no negotiating. Jesus developed disciples by mentoring missionaries as opposed to putting or pe pushing people into programs. It's one of the reasons why at our church we're not about programs. We will fight against the culture of programs because all you get with programs is a puffed up religious crowd. Jesus was training disciples to be missionaries. That's what we should be about, all that we do. And notice throughout Scripture, Jesus lived on mission. You and I, Christian, Christ-like follower, we too are to live on mission. It's not an event. It's not a summer thing. It's not a Sunday thing. It's not an occasional thing. It's who we are. Not churchgoers, but Christ followers who are not willing to talk to, but are loving and connected to intentionally building real relationships who understand, as we saw earlier from Charlie's sharing, they know the word of God and they have prayed and they have heard the direction of God and then they can communicate both clearly. Every single time you see that, you're guaranteed to have maximum impact, spiritually speaking, under the blessing and the word of God. So you and I, brothers and sisters, this is our goal to become high-potency followers of Christ who get in close proximity through real deal relationships, no strings attached. Just, I love you because I was loved by Christ. And then I take the time to dig the ditches and to learn God's word and to craft my language well enough so that I can speak clearly to people whose eternities weigh in the balance. Not so that I can be guaranteed an outcome because we can't, but because it's important to me that I have the maximum impact with my life that I could possibly have for Jesus the Christ and those that I claim to love. 